The episode opens with a haunting image of dead World War II soldiers. The sound of gunfire and explosion mixed with chanting and Codron shouting Dixon. Echo in the background. Back to the present day, Codron assures Daryl that he'll die today for the death of his brother. The enhanced walker is set loose in the pit, and the fun begins. Combined with being a burner walker, a runner and extremely strong, the walker is winning by a landslide, to Janet's enjoyment. But the Walking Dead franchise would never let its moneymaker die. So Daryl manages to defeat the walker with the end of a French flag patriotism at its finest. The soldiers bring out Quinn, chaining him up to Daryl. The two believe they're fighting against each other. But a few more enhanced walkers are brought out. Daryl and Quinn work together to defeat the walkers, who actually tried to kill each other in the end. A flaw in the formula, it seems, the crowd cheers for Daryl as Falu shoots a soldier from above. Janet sends Codrin to find Daryl, who has escaped with Quinn. An exhausted Quinn reveals a walker bite on his back, which he tries to play off as a burn. Isabel and Laurent are taken back to a cell where Laurent expresses his loss of faith. He's beginning to question whether God has abandoned them. To which Isabel proves him wrong she pickpocketed the keys off of the soldiers, setting them free. Meanwhile, Daryl amputates Quinn's arm to cut them both loose from each other. When soldiers find them, Quinn sacrifices himself to give Daryl time to escape. Daryl meets up with Falou, Sylvie and Emile outside, and they form a plan to find Isabel and Laurent in the cell blocks. Daryl eventually finds Isabel and Laurent, but they're separated by a locked gate. A zombified Quinn attacks Isabel, and the only one who can save her is Laurent. But Laurent, as any frightened child would be, hesitates. Daryl encourages him to kill Quinn, telling him God will forgive him. This is the motivation Laurent needs to kill his zombified father. Sylvie and Emile say their goodbyes as they're all in the clear. Falou and Emile must return to their community as Janet's people put. Up their defenses around the country. On the road, Sylvie asks Daryl if he's ever been in love in a random out of the blue moment. As expected, he avoids the question. The things this show will do to bring up Daryl's romantic life, which in retrospect shouldn't be as important as it's made it to be, has officially become exhausting. Daryl and Isabel bond as Daryl tries to fix the truck. She jokes that her father gave up trying to teach her how to change a tire after two hours. While Daryl said his father refused to let him mean if he couldn't put an engine back together, he says that history repeated itself with his family. His grandfather died. On D-Day during the Normandy invasion, leaving Daryl's father without a paternal figure in his life. In Daryl's mind, if you grew up without a father, you're cursed to continue the cycle, which comes into importance later in the episode. Isabel confesses to Daryl the truth about the picture Laurent drew of Daryl before he arrived. In France in the premiere, she asked Laurent to draw the picture when he arrived at the Abbey to convince Daryl to help them. Codrin and other soldiers confront the group. Codrin is ordered to kill Laurent, but even he knows this is taking it too far. He got into this game to kill Daryl, never a child. After Laurent tells Codrin that God loves him, Codrin kills the rest of the soldiers. He spares their lives, declaring that if they ever cross paths again, he'll kill Daryl. He gives them directions to the nest at Mont Saint Michel, with his last instructions being to burn the truck so they're not easily traced. The group arrives at the nest at last and are greeted by its leader, Losang. Dozens, possibly hundreds, of people reside at the nest as well. Losang came to France in the 90s as a student from New Jersey, which he jokes is his dirty little secret. Isabelle awakes in the infirmary, being treated for a stab wound, and finds Daryl teaching people how to shoot. Daryl finds a sense of community with the people of the nest, even through the language and cultural barriers. He spends more time with Laurent, which makes it all the more difficult when they have to part ways. Laurent's not the only person who doesn't want Daryl to leave Isabel is distraught by the idea of Daryl going back home to America. Even Losang himself says that Daryl has people in France who want him to stay. In the context of just Daryl Dixon, it makes sense why Daryl would feel conflicted about his decision to leave. He's been on this journey with them since the start of the show. But in the context of the Walking Dead franchise as a whole, knowing Daryl has a family he's known for over a decade elsewhere, the struggle to make a choice is odd. 
The decision should be easy, considering Daryl has much stronger bonds with Carol, Aaron, Judith, etc. Regardless, Daryl doesn't rest too easy, leaving Lauren and Isabel behind, which Losan practically points out. Codron informs Janet that he and his people were ambushed by Daryl, but she presses harder, saying she knows how to spot a liar just by working night shifts in a museum. Whatever that connection is, Codron gives in, saying he couldn't kill Laurent. When he refuses to tell her where the nest is, Janet has him taken to a cell, promising things will get worse from there, and declares war on the Union of Hope. Isabel tries to get Daryl to stay at the nest, saying he left the Commonwealth to see what was out in the world, which is just a straight-up lie. Isabel believes it, but why can't Daryl just say that he left to find Rick Grimes, who was like a brother to him? Why is the show refusing to make this connection? She hits him hard by saying Daryl's acting like his abusive father by abandoning Laurent, which is a pretty low blow. Daryl makes it to the beach, where he frantically searches for his grandfather's grave. He breaks down at the sight of thousands of crosses and stars of David's, on the beach where the soldiers are laid to rest. The boat reaches the horizon that Daryl is supposed to sail on until he's ambushed by walkers. On the beach, Laurent, who's been following him, calls after Daryl. Daryl turns back, breaking the Dixon cycle that his grandfather and father were bound by. In America, Carol stops a man driving Daryl's motorcycle on the road. Carol ties him up in the trunk of the car, and he reveals he traded the bike at a camp not too far away. She leaves him in the trunk, riding the motorcycle to the camp. 